This question is about functions and function transformations. Let's start off with the first part. We're given a function and we're told to find its inverse. Just note, f to the minus 1 of x is not f dashed x. This is the gradient function, or the differential. We're asked to find the inverse function. So what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to put it in terms of y. We're going to let y be equal to our function 3 subtract 2x over x subtract 5. Now what we can do, we can do this at the start of the end, but let's do it at the start. Let's swap the roles of x and y so that x is equal to 3 subtract 2y over y subtract 5. And now we're going to rearrange to make y the subject of the formula. So multiply both sides by y subtract 5, and we would get xy subtract 5x is equal to 3 subtract 2y. Okay, let's add 2y to both sides, and let's add 5x to both sides to get all the y's together and all the x's together. So we would get xy plus 2y is equal to 3 plus 5x. Then we can factorise the y here. y x plus 2 is equal to 3 plus 5x. And then we could divide by both sides by the x plus 2, and we would get y is equal to 3 plus 5x over x plus 2. So writing that in the correct form, f to the minus 1 of x is therefore 3 plus 5x divided by x plus 2. And that's it, we're done for 3 marks. Now, the rest of the question, uh, well, a majority of the rest of the question is about a new function g. It tells you has the domain x is uh, bigger than or equal to negative 1 and less than or equal to 8. So look, here's the graph of it here. The x value is between negative 1 and 8, 8 inclusive. And it is linear from negative 1 to negative 9. So it's, it's linear from here to here and it's linear from here to here. And it says... Uh, the figure 2 sh shows a sketch of the graph. Now it says write down the range of g. Well, what y values can g take? Well, g of x, okay, is less than or equal to 4. That's its maximum. Is less than or equal to 4. And it's bigger than or equal to minus 9 or negative 9. It's as simple as looking at the graph for this. Well, you could have written it in terms of y. y is uh, less than or equal to 4 and bigger than or equal to minus 9. Just read off the graph here. What y values can it attain? Now, find g of g of 2. By this, it means g, uh, it means g of g of 2. Okay? So to do that, let's first of all work out g of 2. What happens when you put x as 2 into the function g? Well, here's g. When x is 2, you get y is 0. So this is 0. So g of g of 2 must be the same thing as g of 0. And g of 0, what happens when you put x is 0 into this? You get negative 6 as a y value. And it's as simple as that. Find f of g of 8. Well, the first thing is to work out g of 8. Looking at the graph, when you put 8 in, you get 4 out. So g of 8 is 4. So f of g of 8 is therefore f of 4. And it's the answer you get when you put 4 into this function here. Okay? Now, when you put 4 into that function there, you get negative 5 over negative 1, which is 5, and it's as simple as that. Now, on separate diagrams, draw the following. Okay, so imagine we were drawing this here. I'll draw it like this here. Now, the modulus of g of x, well, what that does is it... When g is positive, it keeps it positive. And then where g becomes negative, it reflects that upwards as such as follows. So we need to label the key points here. This here is the point 2. And then this here would be the point 6. Okay? Or would be 0, 6 even. Okay? And this would be the point 2, 0. It's as simple as that. Now, g inverse... G inverse is a reflection in the line y is x. 
Okay, it's going to be a reflection in that line. So let's draw the original graph. The original graph looks something like this. That's the original G. So we could just uh, reflect that. Now this point here is the point two zero. And this point here is the point zero negative six. Now the inverse graph uh, swaps roles. So this key point here, two zero, well now it would be a very important point here, but it would be at zero two. And this point here, zero negative six, well, that would be a key point, but it would be at negative 6, 0 instead now. So we're just reflecting this in this line here. So you can imagine it looking something as follows. And it would be as simple as that. Lastly, it says state the domain of the inverse function of g. Well, if you've drawn the inverse function, what x values can the inverse function take? Well, let's just have a quick look here. This one went all the way up to this coordinate here, which was 8, 4. So this one will go up to 4, 8. And it went all the way down here to negative 1, negative 9. So it will go all the way across here to negative 9, negative 1. So what x values can it take? Well, it can take any x value between... Uh, between negative 9 and 4. So the x values it can take, well, it can be less than or equal to 4, or it can be less than or bigger than or equal to negative 9, and you're done.